uh, WAPO screwed up. They claimed that uh, Uncle Joe was in the race. They claimed that uh, he was going to be announcing, and we still have no announcement. Then they quickly took down the post saying that they were anticipating. Newspapers do this all the time. They write stories in anticipation of things happening. They were anticipating Uncle Joe getting into the race. Well, okay then. Great job, WAPO. That's why, you know, mainstream media is in the state it's in. And uh, thanks for giving me a platform in the new media. You know, I'm just a blogger and all that. Uh, giving us a, a chance to uh, get a, sh- a swing at the plate here. You know what, folks? It's uh, it's kind of strange when you think about this whole Democratic field. You know, you, you talk about the chaos in the Republican field and how we have all these voices clamoring for the same votes. On the other side, you got people anticipating, are we going to get anything better than what we have? And that really typifies the divide between the parties right now. As much as you think the Republican Party doesn't have their act together, they have it more together than the Democrats do, because the Democrats are left wanting for more. They're not happy with Hillary. They're not happy with Bernie. They're not happy with the two Stooges. Well, it used to be three Stooges, but now it's down to two. And who would be with this with this field? I mean, talk about a lack of diversity. Uh, I know that we talk about Black Lives Matter when it comes to the Democratic Party, but what about black candidates? Don't they matter? I mean, the Republicans have a uh, wide spectrum of black candidates, Hispanic candidates, female candidates. Uh, they run the gamut. Age ranges going from young to old. Democrats have got two. You got really two choices. You got white male and old. You got white female and old. You got socialist. You got you know whatever the poll says is good this week. Those are your choices right now. If you're a Democrat, no wonder you're clamoring for Uncle Joe Biden to come in. It's going to get even more interesting as the days, weeks, and months tick away as we head towards 2016, folks. You know, I've been doing a lot of dem bashing this se- this segment of the show. Uh, we are at halftime. I want to thank everybody for listening. This is uh, Gene Berardelli. Russ Gallo is gone this week. You're listening to Behind Enemy Lines Radio, and while I got you listening, check out our website. That's www. That behind enemy lines radio.us. Check us out on Facebook and on Twitter at BEL underscore radio. And if you miss any part of the show, check us out on replay. We're available on Spreaker, Stitcher, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Podbay, uh, Player FM. The list goes on and on and on. We're adding more every week. We're going to take a quick break right now. Like I said, we're gonna, I mentioned Reverend Al Sharpton. We're going to give him a little bit of equal time. Because I did a little dem bashing, we got to give a little equal time. Gene Baradelli behind enemy lines. We're going to have a little fun right now with the Reverend Al. We'll be back right after the Reverend Al. The show will be right back. But first, a word from Al Sharpton. Good evening, Rev. Thanks Good evening, to Rev. you, Ed. <laughs> Is this Crown Hog Day 2? We are watching... That was Attorney General Eric Holder, ABDs, about some Republicans at home are already beating the drums of war. Today, the Pentagon refuted that claim. And he said the American people do not want him to, quote, dwindling. They do not want him dwindling his thumbs. You can get a gig as a court. Uh, contortionist, intravenous fluids and pills coated uh, with galette, uh, gelatin. We don't leave our women or women, women or men in uniform behind. It's a monument to the hubris of Dick Cheney, Representative Raul Ara, uh Labrador. Years of, abru- of abuse. I personally apologize to Mr. Peebus. Just ask to soon to be former congressman. Democrats are outright jitty. CIA's counter and counter tourism, counter terrorism center. Veteran Affairs Secretary Shinsketti. Shin, why do I always mess up his name? Shinseki. I love my critics. I have fun with that. Politics Nation with the Reverend Al Sharpton starts right now. Good evening, Rev. Good. Good evening, Dr. Dyson. But wait, there's more. And we will much about that 
be committed. So there's no real conflict. Michael Drunisky, Druni, Druniak, including Lincoln himself, Daniel Days Lewis. We're behind Monica Lewinsky, the one and only Trey Song is here. But Allison Lundergan Grimes, Gina Dale Day Seuss, when Gina Day just who's Tea Party Challenger Matt Matt Bivett. People don't want to have their social security overall. They Republican savior Mark Rubio's big night in evolution and Galileo. I mean, this whole thing of Galileo. America's changed, uh, changed. Unless uh, IT and skillets, President Putin doing something similar back in. It won't change this fundamental fact about the GOP. Just how absurd these attacks is. Nearly six months after the dangerous traffic jam negation, the Thai military says, my friend for many years, Ilyana Vazant, Vazant. There's nothing there. And all we can get is an internet show? Let's get back to it. Gene Berardelli, back behind enemy lines. And folks, again, quick programming note. Next week, Roger Stone coming on the show. Former advisor to Donald Trump's presidential campaign. Author of the new book, The Clinton's War on Women. We'll be talking a little bit of Hillary bashing. And of course, I'm going to ask him what it was like to work for the Donald during this campaign. And how his relationship with him is right now. But that's for next week, folks. Tune in for that. And of course... Let's round out this show a little bit. Got a few other things to talk about. First, uh, I think I have to say this uh, a little tongue-in-cheek. For those of you who don't know, I'm kind of a big sports guy. Uh, Mets are doing well, thank goodness, first time in a really long time. And we're having a lot of fun with that. Uh, we also have a little bit of a fantasy football league going with a bunch of our friends here uh, behind enemy lines and with the Brooklyn Young Republicans. And I have to publicly acknowledge... Russ Gallo beat me last week. He trounced me, folks. I've had some injuries. I'm making no excuses. He beat me. He basically has the entire New England Patriots on his team. So, whatever. Congratulations, Russ. It's on tape. You won. And we're going to move on with the show now. I had to do that. It was a little bit of a bet. Whatever. So, definitely check out our blog, www.behindmelinesradio.us. The top story on there right now is something I want to talk about. Because it, it cuts a little deep and it cuts a little personal to me. Uh, for those of you who don't know, in the People's Republic of New York City, there's a couple of different newspapers. Of course, everybody knows the New York Times. Huck Tui, I can't believe I just said their name on air. There's the New York Post, of course, which is more of the conservative-leaning paper. Uh, Newsday is like on Long Island. We don't really count them. Don't tell them, but we don't really count Newsday as really anything. It's like a Long Island paper. And then there's the New York Daily News, which tries to hide their liberal bias as best they can. Try to be down the middle. They try to be, quote-unquote, fair and balanced. And i got to be honest, I've been reading them for most of my life. Well, that ends today, folks. A couple of reasons why. I found out recently that Sean King, the white guy who pretends to be black, that is an activist in the Black Lives Matter movement, but he lied about his parentage, and he lied about a, uh, quote-unquote, bias incident that happened to him in the 90s. You know the story on him. He's like the male Rachel Dolezal. For those of you who don't remember, the story broke in early September, uh, late August, about him. Well, he's gone from breaking the stories to writing about the stories for the New York Daily News, folks. And this is also in the context of the Daily News firing and failing to renew the contracts of many credible journalists, including some friends of mine. I'm not going to make it personal and mention their names. They're looking for work right now, and any New York media person out there that's looking for quality work... Check out who the Daily News let go. Grab them up right now. They're quality, good journalists. I've worked with them in the past. I've spoken to them in the past. I've interviewed them on this show. Much better than some known, lying, racist, biased hack writing for this newspaper. Sean King wrote a story that appeared in the Daily News talking about an incident in Virginia where a young black male high school graduate was on the football team, Patterson Brown Jr. 
was shot by a plainclothes off-duty police officer. And the end of the story talked about how this was the 25th young black male killed by the police in 2015. But he left out several details of the story that matter, pardon the pun, Sean, that matter to all people. He left out the fact that the gentleman who was getting who was shot, and it's a tragedy any time anybody gets shot, he left out the fact that an eyewitness accounted that Mr. Brown looked like he was going for a weapon when the police officer shot once. He also shaded the fact that Mr. Brown, this uh, high school graduate, football player, promising potential pro athlete, stole the car of the plainclothes police officer. He didn't say stole in his article. He said commandeered the gentleman's vehicle and then did not leave it when he was asked to get out. He stole a car and was ordered out of it by a police officer and didn't follow the order. And then, according to eyewitness accounts, it looked like he was reaching for a weapon. This is not journalism. This is advocacy in the worst possible way under the color of journalism. And before everybody gets into a tizzy, listen, I realize what we are here behind enemy lines. I'm not a news show. Russ and I don't do the news. We're advocacy entertainment. It's a little phrase I I like to use. Advocacy entertainment. We're not here to give you the fair and balanced view. We're not even here to report the news. We're here to have an opinion and back it up. And be entertaining along the way. That's our job here. We make no illusions about it to you, our audience. We think that you're smart enough to recognize that if you're tuning into this show, if you're tuning into other shows like Hannity, if you're tuning into other shows like Rush, if you're tuning into other shows like Bill O'Reilly and the O'Reilly Factor, to Megyn Kelly, to any number of shows, Hugh Hewitt, Dennis Prager, the list goes on and on, you are not only looking to be informed about an opinion of the host, you're also being entertained by them and their personality and their little quirks. I listen to John Gambling here in the People's Republic of New York City, and I listen because of his mannerisms. I want to learn from the best. He's been doing this for years and years. And I listen because I'm entertained, not only by the knowledge that I'm receiving and the opinions that I'm getting, but by the personality that I'm listening to. Sean King is not a journalist. Let's get that out of the way right now. Sean King is an advocate for a position. I may not agree with the position, you may not agree with the position, but let's call it what it is. He has an opinion, and he advocates for it. By the Daily News hiring him to advocate for a position, under the color of delivering news, he is doing not only a disservice to the readers, he's creating a greater divide in our nation by creating yet another echo chamber where people can say, oh, that's, that's a news report. That's actually what happened. No, it's not actually what happened. That's one man's filter being skewed and delivering you something that actually isn't based in reality. The young man commandeered the car. No, the young man stole the car. The young man didn't listen when he was asked to get out. No, the young man was ordered out of the car and he didn't listen to an authority. And then they don't explain in his article how the gentleman was shot, but in an article from the local paper down there, a real journalist reported that Mr. Brown was going for a weapon, it looked like, and the officer shot once. And by the way, of course, the officer is torn up about it. He was crying on the side of the road when the whole thing happened. Investigation still pending, of course. But I'm bringing this up not as an example of what happened in this incident. I'm bringing this up as an example of what happens when the media decides to indoctrinate instead of just give the news. Another example of this, the same Black Lives Matter movement, there's a new professor at Yale. In case you haven't heard, D. Ray McKisson, uh, of course, uh, one of the faces of the Black Lives Matter movement, teaching a seminar course at Yale. Of course, that's going to be fair and balanced and talking about, you know, real issues and quantifiable and qualitative facts that academia brings to America. No, folks. It's going to be skewed, slanted, and crooked 
all in the favor of one person's viewpoint. 